Good. We're now in 1990. Uh, we defended a thesis and there were jobs I could apply for. There was one in Groningen, for instance, and it would have meant 60% of my time teaching and 40% research. And it was also in Groningen while I lived in Utrecht, which was two hours away. So I took the courage to not apply for that job but to apply for a postdoc grant. And the postdoc grant was called the, Constant the Christian and Constantijn Huygens grant. So this was uh, ambitious. It was through all, all the sciences. And I got that. And uh, I was the only woman that year. There were four men. This was still the Netherlands. Uh, just also for my thesis defense, there were only men asking questions. Uh, and when I defended the grant, uh, the grant application, I had written a grant application, just to give you a flavor of the day, there, were, there was a committee of 13, 13 men. Uh, so I was there, 30 years old, 13 men. And uh, given that I was a long flavored feminist, I could have gotten really angry, but of course that wouldn't have given me the grant. Uh, and the good thing of having been in Groningen, these, these Groningen philosophers were fierce. They were really into discussion. A good fight was always nice. Lola was uh, able to really push somebody to the edge. Uh, Lola Nauta, my, my former supervisor there. So I wasn't scared of them, but, uh, but I, I was angry. But the art was to not show that and to be cheerful and nice and friendly. Apparently, I pulled that off. Um, and uh, the grant in the grant application, I had promised to study differences in medicine. That it was called differences in medicine. And there was a big concern at the time about how medicine was different from one place to the other. There were good books between culturalist and uh, it was sort of culturalist uh, journalism showing that, let's say, in France they had hardly any operations uh, on the uterus because the French gynecologists thought that women really needed that, while in the US they were cutting them out by numbers. So there were that kind of, of differences, uh, but there were also more smaller differences. And, and I think some of the members in the committee were thinking that I would contribute to solving that problem. Sadly for them, I didn't do that. Uh, but I was about differences in medicine, but my concern was that in response to the, the differences that were uh, seen, what came up was the whole idea of evidence-based medicine, where epidemiological rationality would take over the decision as to what to do or not. Uh, so instead of clinical experience, there would be epidemiological signs. And that would be, let's say, you give a certain drug to 100 people and not to 100 others, and then you count how many people heal from it. Now, for drugs, this does make sense. But the problem was that it was done all over the shop. And in my eyes, that meant that things that you can easily measure uh, were gaining a lot more attention than things that are more subtle. Uh, let's say the laboratory medicine was winning out over clinical medicine over the story that people tell in the consulting room and also the physical examination of the doctor where, where they feel something. So that, that was shifted aside and that was one of my concerns. And, and my other idea was that what I had tried in Who Knows What a Woman Is, for that I hadn't done field work. I had just used my, what I knew about, my, about medicine about from my textbooks and from watching around, that I wanted to delve deep into that and see in more detail how different disciplines do disease, relate to disease different. It was actually what I had hoped to do in the children's hospital when I was 21, but couldn't do. So I was going to do that. Well, I did. Uh, first, at the start, I had several cases. They were all going to be about blood. 
in the end, I ended up doing two cases, and one of them was atherosclerosis of the leg vessels. And, um, well, uh, ten years later, this became this book, uh, The Body Multiple, Ontology in Medical Practice. And I, I, I love the design. I'm very grateful to the designer of Duke University Press who, who made this beautiful because it's different and just a bit different. It's about that all the time. The book is about how different specialties uh, do this disease differently and act it differently, perform it differently, and to give a flavor. Uh, if a person is in the consulting room, they may complain about having their hurting, uh, having their legs hurting after walking 100 meters or 50 meters. And that would be a clinical sign of atherosclerosis. But in the pathology department, where of course you can only diagnose if you have, act if somebody has been cut in, and, and oftentimes that means if their legs have been amputated, so that, that is really an, an other group of patients. Uh, you can make a slice of a vessel and look at it under a microscope and then through the microscope see a thick vessel wall. Now, in practice, these things don't map onto each other. So there may be idea there is one disease and it has different aspects, but there is not one disease. Some people have a lot of complaints, but their vessels would look okay and the other way around. There never maps. And there are many more diagnostic techniques. There is pressure loss from between the arm and the ankle, there's also uh, uh, x-ray pictures that you can take and then suddenly it's not the vessel wall but the content of the vessel that you can see because you see contrast in the, co in the vessel. There's also the same disease in, uh, in the operation theater where uh, doctors can make a bypass around something because the blood doesn't flow. And there is the epidemiolo The internal medicine is important where this is a gradual process of deterioration that should be prevented early on so that somebody never enters the surgery. Uh, and there's epidemiology that counts it in the population. So it's a bit like, who knows what a woman is, but it's now around this disease, which I partly took because it was really not political, so to speak. In So woman would be controversial. And all kind of people told me, you have to study HIV. But I thought, I have to go somewhere where nobody sees it's political. Then I can show that it is political, not in the sense of going through government, but really in the sense of ordering and organizing reality in different ways. <coughs> Hence, the ontology, ontology in medical practice. It doesn't mean ontology in 19th century, what is really going on. It means that what is going on is actually done in practice. There are different variants of it. So um, that then means that uh, we, sh we, whoever we is in this case, should ask in healthcare which version makes most sense where, and that if you introduce a gold standard, a sort of one real reality of the disease, you pin the disease down on that version, rather than thinking that in some cases or in some situations this might be a better way of handling or that might be a better way of approximating. For instance, which in practice the surgeons did, and with diagnosing, they tried to do a diagnosis that is not invasive, not because it is a better reality, but because it is not invasive. So they, they deal with all kind of other variables than knowing. It's not about knowing. We'll come back to that later. For that, I had done a lot of field work. Let's say I told uh, the, for who knows what a woman is, I, I, hadn't, I had used uh, textbook materials for uh, Zeke is it Wortnit, we had used the archive. Uh, this time round, uh, I, I went into the hospital and I sat into clinics and I, I was in operation theatres, I was in research meetings and all the rest of it. Now this is, f as anthropology goes, slightly strange field work because I could go there by bike. Uh, it was really very close to where I lived. And I also could not go, I could not go more than one or two days a week. I mean, that wasn't due to the field, they would, I, it was fine. I had the protection of a big shot professor, which is what you have to do in a hierarchical system like that. Uh, and he thought it was sort of interesting what I was doing, so I, he gave me the, 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 he gave me access. So I had access, but after a day, I was completely out of it. It was both intellectually and emotionally totally draining to do that, partly because it was 
uh, I had to make it strange, uh, which in get using some techniques of, of, of fieldwork was easy because it's really very weird, of course, if people cut in a body. I mean, what, what kind of social practice is that? And material practice, for that matter. But uh, it, I, also fa I also had just about escaped becoming a doctor because, in a way, given my uh, paternal ancestry, the idea was that I would become the next generation of doctors. I had escaped that. And, uh, and most of the people I met during the day had no idea what I was doing and why this was interesting, because they were not reflexive. I was really grateful for one young surgeon who was the same age as I, who knew me from medical school. He had been in the same year. So he, and he was, uh, he was open and clever and he took me serious and we discussed his research and it was sort of fun for him too, I think, because I was actually interested in his research. So, uh, so there were a few people like that along the way, uh, but otherwise it was tough. It was tough field work for me emotionally. But, uh, well, the book, is, the book came out and um, well, oh, what the book also has is that, again, I had problem how to relate to uh, literatures, I always have problem with that because I often think it goes far too f too superficial. But here I have a I have a super text in which I write and a subtext which is an analysis of the literature so far. Uh, so it is I wrote that in a way as an introduction for younger scholars. How did we get to this question? What is behind it? So uh, the, uh, again, I was grateful f to the the designer of the publisher who did who designed. Uh, this way of of printing it. In parallel, I was did something in parallel. In parallel, um, I worked with Mark Berg, who I also supervised as a PhD student, on this book, Differences in Medicine, same topic, but uh, now with articles from all kind of our international friends, his friends, my friends, or and so that gave us really the advantage of different conversations on it uh, and, and different cases and slightly different theoretical perspectives too. So that came out further. It's always if I do things in parallel, the other the thing with others comes out f earlier. So that, so that was earlier. Now we can situate this work in science studies and then in both cases for both books and then it's sort of a shift from the laboratory to the clinic. So it's not the laboratory where uh, where some of the earlier SDS people like Latour, but also Karen Knossetina and had, had done field work. Uh, because in those laboratories, the aim is, as they uh, related it, is to produce reproductions. So in as far as you have interventions, you have experiments, the intervention is meant to, to come to the representation. In the hospital, it's the other way around. There are lots of representations, but they are meant to come to an intervention. So this gives what it is to know and what it is to act and what it is to do a very different take. Um, but uh, well, the similarity is that reality in uh, what, what we took from the earlier science studies is how reality is performed, how it is part of a practice and not already there. It's being done in the hospital. You can also insert these same work in anthropology of medicine that we obviously also read. Um, there was a lot of good anthropology of, of medicine, and but what struck me is, for instance, I had read this great book about Asian medical systems, and they would explain how Ayurveda or traditional Chinese medicine are not coherent knowledge systems, but juxtapositions of different ways of doing and working. Fine, I, I knew nothing, so I was totally prepared to believe that I hadn't studied there. But what really stunned me is that then in a few lines or in between, you would have these us-them comparisons where they were coherent and, and uh, incoherent, I mean, and juxtaposing us. And the supposition was that we were rational and coherent. And I thought, have you ever been in a hospital in Boston or, uh, or, or Amsterdam or Utrecht? Or Paris, wherever, coherent. So there was this weird thing in which we were not studied. So what, what 
we saw as what we were doing anthropology of medicine is opening up this idea of the West being rational and coherent. And, and Latour had done this also with his science studies and he, had, he has a few wonderful quotes about that of how we shouldn't believe that we are rational. If you don't critique the rationalist, you stop believing they are rationalists and the control room is a mess, and et cetera, and so on. So in that sense, the, this work was really also set up to turn the anthropological gaze to Western practices, to show their utter complexity and to stop believing their, their flat ideologies of being rationals, coherent, uh, knowing it all, and, and all the rest of it. So that was that work.